Are you at a point right now where you don't know if you should go to college or maybe you should be a working professional in the civilian world or maybe you want to explore your options for the military? Well, this is the video for you. Number one, and this might be a deal breaker, you can't bring your girlfriend when you're enlisted in the military. A lot of people get hung up on that fact and that keeps a lot of people from joining the military. Like, unless you're married, the Marine Corps, the Army, the Air Force, they don't care that you have a girlfriend. They don't care that you guys have been together for eight years and you're a perfect couple and blah, 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 blah. They don't care. Unless you're married, you can't bring that person along with you. Now, if you're an officer, then yeah, you can live off base and all that good stuff and bring whoever you want. But if you're enlisted, you have to live in the barracks. You can't just bring your girlfriend with you to live. Really, there's three options you can do. Option one is a long distance relationship. I've seen them work. My long distance relationship worked but it was very tough. Option two is going the officer route. As an officer, they won't pay for you to have a girlfriend, but at least you can live out in town and she can live with you or he can live with you or whatever. So that's an option. The third option, and I do not recommend this option. This is probably the worst option and I don't even know why I'm mentioning it, but you could always just right away get married to that person and then they have to bring the, the spouse along. The reason I don't recommend doing this is because a lot of these shotgun weddings, a lot of these like rushed weddings don't work out, especially in the Marine Corps. Like just, it's an option and I'm, I'm not telling you to do it, but it's, it's a bad option. If you've only known this person for like a week or two, I don't recommend you guys getting married just so you can live together, but whatever. You won't see your family very often. The chances are you are going to move far, far, far away from home. And for a lot of people that's hard to like, like you think it'd be common sense, but for some people they're like, what the heck? I don't get to go home whenever I want. Like, no, not really. Because you could be stationed in Okinawa. Maybe you get stationed in Lejeune. Maybe you get stationed in Camp Pendleton or Hawaii. Like you don't even know where you're going to get stationed. So the chances of you seeing your family more than a few times a year are very, very slim. The third thing to consider is it doesn't matter if you're an admin clerk or an 0311 infantryman, you are going to be a professional janitor. No matter what, you're gonna learn how to clean your barracks room, you're gonna learn how to clean the company office, like a lot of people go into the Marine Corps or the Army and they just think, yeah man, I'm gonna be killing bodies and every day is gonna be an adventure. Not really. In fact, you'll get really, really good at cleaning toilets and mopping floors and all that good stuff. Number four, prepare to not have a car for a little while. So depending on how long your MOS school is, Mine was like seven or eight months. I didn't have a car for my first year in the Marine Corps. So if you go through boot camp, that's three months. And then MCT, that could be anywhere between one and two months, depending if you get camp guard. And then MOS school, you cannot have a, you cannot have a car in MOS school. So for a lot of people, you're not going to have a car to travel with. You can't just go leave base whenever you want. You have to be in fire teams when you leave. And what I mean by that is if you want to go to Walmart, you have to have two other buddies go with you. And if one of those buddies don't want to go to the mall or go to wherever, you can't go. So know that you're, even though you might be 29 years old and a full grown adult, you're going to be treated like a child a lot. So just prepare for that. My last point, and I kind of mentioned this in the beginning, is you're going to be living in the barracks with a whole bunch of other Marines. That means you're going to have the formations at random times. You can't just like have privacy. Your door is always going to get knocked on. People are always going to be breaking stuff. The washer and dryer is always going to be broken. Like there's always, there's going to be a host of problems when you live in the barracks. Also, while you live in the barracks, you have to serve duty. Now, one aspect of duty is you get in your uniform and you're up 24 hours making sure people aren't destroying the barracks and the barracks aren't burning down or whatever. Firecrackers aren't being lit in the middle of the barracks. Like I've seen it all. I've seen it all while I was on duty. So that's one aspect of duty. The other aspect is called a rover. And what a rover is, is you wake up at like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night and you go walk around the barracks for two to four hours, I think. I think it's four hours, but it's kind of ridiculous. So duty really sucks. It's something that everybody has to do, but it's miserable. Oh, and the worst part about living in the barracks is you can't just have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever stay in your barracks room with you. It's not an apartment. You have to live there by yourself. If you get caught housing somebody in your barracks room, you're probably gonna get NJP'd. Like, this is not all to scare you guys or anything like that. I'm just giving you the cold, hard, honest truth. 
and I like to pride myself on being a no BS kind of person. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Clayton Philpo. All right, later guys.